Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been a very long time since I recorded a, a new tutorial. Uh, today I am going to record a, a very recent paper uh, called Minimum Bayesian Risk Training for RNN Transducer for End-to-End -end Speech Recognition. And uh, this paper is coming from uh, Tencent Labs. Tencent, uh, I mean many people may be knowing about Tencent company, Tencent AI Labs uh, in US. And uh, these are the authors as you can see here and uh, so the pep, the tutorial uh, basically uh, we are going to explain the uh, new way of doing end-to-end uh, uh, -end speech recognition uh, using something called minimum Bayesian risk loss so also known as MBR loss so this is uh, uh, one of the uh, old technique which was developed by uh, I think Daniel Pove uh, back in uh, 2014 sometime uh, not 2014 I think bef before that so it comes under something called discriminative training of uh, speech recognition algorithms and uh, there are various other methods like MMI if you see uh, like that there are various other discriminative training methods and uh, this MBR is also one of them and uh, there is MPE uh, and so on so so basically what uh, we are going to see is uh, this paper basically this paper which is coming from Tencent Labs they are focusing on how do we use uh, minimum Bayesian risk which is MBR uh, loss uh, for training a RNN transducer types uh, model for speech recognition right so uh, and uh, in this tutorial we will cover the overview first uh, of the entire paper then we will see uh, what is RNN transducer uh, but with self attention layers uh, we will see what are these trans self attention layers um, many people may be uh, knowing about transformers and uh, uh, if you have idea of what is transformer i think the tutorial is going to be very easy for you to understand and uh, we will see what is uh, minimum bayesian risk training so non also known as mbr training so how do you do this for rnn transducers right and uh, these type of rnn transducers and uh, we'll also see how do you uh, include or how do you fuse the external language model which can be any neural network language model uh, into the speech recognition model uh, so that uh, the predictions are better right so that we will see and uh, finally we'll see the experimentations and uh, all the results which they have produced right so coming to the overview so basically as i mentioned this tutorial i mean this paper basically talks about how to use uh, the MBR, the minimum Bayesian risk training for training RNN transducer models, right, for end to end speech recognition. And uh, as you know, if you look at the MBR loss function, uh, if you go back to old uh, Daniel Poe's old paper about what is this MBR training, so basically it's about uh, along with minimizing the cross entropy loss, you can also minimize the expected edit distance or also uh, it could be a string edit distance between the reference sequence and the generated hen based hypothesis like uh, for example let's take an example let's say you have a sentence let's say you have an audio signal uh, and uh, the audio which you spoke was uh, let's say i am going to school all right so something like that i am going to school is your reference sentence or your ground to sentence and uh, the model uh, model could be any uh, any model like as i mentioned here this could be a simple rnn transducer model will give you some hypothesis right hypothesis one hypothesis two hypothesis three and so on it could be hypothesis n so based on your beam size uh, so using beam search you can select the top n hypothesis and uh, you can compare this predicted hypothesis h1 with the ground truth hypothesis and you can do the same way with uh, predicted uh, uh, the hypothesis two with uh, the reference uh, here so how do you compare these are two sentences so you simply what you could do is you can simply use a string edit distance between these two sentences and string edit distance is almost sort of like a wer computing wer not exactly but sort of like wer so you can use that item or that number uh, to minimize your train you minimize your uh, or you improve your model basically you want the string edit distance between the reference label and the hypothesis to be lower right so that is one way so that's the way uh, this uh, mbr training works we'll, we'll explain all these things in the detail in the coming slides so that's about this uh, mbr and uh, basically that is that's that's uh, if you add that kind of uh, uh, a new signal 
or that kind of a uh, sort of a new uh, guiding signal to the model the model accuracy will be a little bit better so that's what is shown in this paper also so that is one thing and uh, second thing is how do you introduce a new external language model uh, which you can train it separately using a lot of uh, text data crawled from web for example and uh, you want to fuse it to the uh, rnn transducer uh, mo model right so for uh, generating very good hypothesis right so this you can do it uh, with shallow fusion uh, we'll explain this in later shallow fusion there are various other ways of fusing the language model there is shallow fusion there is deep fusion uh, there are like there like that there are so many other uh, uh, fusion techniques uh, there are i think three three or four uh, fusion techniques in uh, yeah, while uh, while you are adding the language model to the speech recognition engine right so uh, and uh, this model basically gives you around uh, uh, one point absolute one point two percent on uh, absolute one point two percent on I think uh, red data and uh, spontaneous data uh, respectively. So this is character rate basically they compute CER and this was done for Chinese data set I mean Chinese and Mandarin data set so uh, better to use uh, character rate instead of word error rate. So uh, this is the introduction so now we will go and understand the uh, detailed architectures and uh, how the the mechanism in which the model works right so before understanding what is this uh, entire architecture let's understand what is this rnn transducer right rnnt here so if you go back to my old tutorials many places i have covered this uh, rnn transducer based speech recognition engines so you can go go back to my youtube channel and search you will get a lot of uh, tutorials which were basically uh, based on this rnn transducers with few modifications here and there but uh, you will get the feel of how rnn transducer works but i'll just uh, give you a small uh, i'll just small recap or just gist of how this rnn transducer works here so basically uh, you will have a input which is a speech signal right this is a speech signal and you convert this speech signal into sequence of vectors using let's say you convert this into sequence of uh, mfcc vectors uh, by calculating uh, one 13 dimensional MLCC vector for every 25 millisecond. So this is going to be a sort of a sequence of frames, right? And these frames will go into the encoder and the encoder could be any, uh, it could be LSTM, it can be CNN or it can be a simple transformer kind of thing. So assume it's some sort of LSTM and the encoder encodes uh, this sequence of X1, X2 and so on XT to F1, F2, FT. And then uh, if you look at the normal uh, deep speech model, there will be no uh, prediction network, right? So what is this prediction network? What is it doing here? So if you go back to the old uh, uh, deep speech model, for example, what it has is it has a simple thing like this. So it has a, it has input, uh, it has a mod, it's a simple CNN LSTM model. It takes sequence of features and uh, predicts uh, some uh, probability scores over all the character for all the frames and you use a CTC. So CTC is basically the loss function. But the problem with CTC is it is uh, when you when you are predicting some prob when you are predicting a output at uh, time step t, which is probability of yt, it only looks at probability of it only looks at the input xt, but nothing else. So it won't care whether the left side predicted it won't it won't care about the left side predicted character before or after. So it is just, it is called conditional independence assumption, which people use in CTC. But to avoid this, because usually speech signals are correlated, because if you know what is the, what was predicted in previous steps, which will obviously help us to predict the next time steps output properly. So this is like the temporal information or a temporal uh, bonding we have through the speech signal because it's a, it has temporal variations. And uh, the CTC loss won't consider that into account. So what you could do is you could use something called prediction network. It's sort of another neural network, which takes the previous prediction, which you can see here, LU minus one, and gives some sort of hidden vector, which can be combined along with the encoders activity and send it to joint network and joint network output will go as a uh, go go to the softmax to predict the current uh, time step symbol right so this way we are taking care of the previous uh, predictions uh, during predicting the current time steps output this is a nice thing so this is this was uh, this is called rnn transducer simple right now how is it related to this architecture so this is the architecture which is published in this paper if you look at this this encoder is basically this is this one 
So if you see this part, this is the encoder part, but this uses something called transformer based architecture. So the transformer, uh, if you see, if you remember, if you go back to the all, all you need uh, is attention paper, uh, which was published back in 2017 by Vaswani. So that paper gives you an idea of how to use just the atten just attentions, not using any convolutions or any sort of uh, LSTMs based ideas. You use, use a simple uh, self attention uh, models, multi headed self attention model and uh, that model will work uh, fine. So the same thing is done here also, but along with uh, along with uh, TDNN layers. So what happens is this one block is one encoder block. And uh, in this case, they have three of these kind of blocks and uh, every block will have a TDNN layer. Uh, three TDNN layer uh, and a transformer encoder. So the transformer encoder is nothing but a simple uh, multi-headed self-attention layer. So that's all as simple as that simple multi-head self-attention. So that is called transformer encoder and three of them will be stacked on top of each other. And if you look at this, this block acts as a prediction network, right? So this prediction network basically takes the outputs which are predicted at these time steps and puts them into a causal 1D convolution because uh, causality because we don't know the future. So it's uh, pre only we know the previous thing. So it's causal 1D convolution and a single transformer encoder and these will be repeated three times. And this block, if you consider, this is nothing but the joint network. So joint network here just combines the prediction networks output and the encoder output and uh, concatenates them. So if you look in terms of equations, this is how it looks like. So you have a encoder uh, h encoder basically the output of the transformer for the encoder which is this this output for example so this has the t time steps and uh, this is the output and uh, you feed uh, you get one uh, symbol or one hidden representation from the decoder and uh, here, if you look at this, this joint is basically combines the hidden representation from decoder and hidden representation from encoder at time step t and uh, it does two tra sort of transformation. It has a matrix wf for one transformation, wg for another transformation and it does uh, bitwise multiplication, not bitwise, it's a uh, element wise multiplication between these two vector and that output will go as an output uh, input to the uh, the projection layer and softmax which is going to predict the probability of particular label given the time step t. Right. So this is the whole idea. I hope you got it because it's uh, not as complicated. It's a very simple idea. Uh, just the transformer, just the RNN transducer. But instead of using normal layers, they have used. They are using this uh, uh, cool uh, uh, TDNN and transformer uh, layers or uh, attention layers. As simple as that. Right. Now let's go to the MBR training. So in the MBR training, so the MBR loss is basically like this. So let's say you have n sentences. Uh, n sentences is n. Uh, input uh, points for example so basically uh, there will be let's say n audio files and corresponding transcripts right so y1 y2 and so on uh, like uh, x1 x2 and so on right so xn right final and uh, each uh, and uh, let's say when we feed an input x x x i uh, sorry x i to the model what we get is uh, sequence of hypothesis like y1 y2 y3 and so on yn right so these are the sequence of hypothesis which we will which we will get uh, from the model this cap with this sort of uh, funny looking y n looks at all the space of uh, possible uh, yn's not all possible like let's say n yn's uh, which are uh, sampled from the model and uh, you compute the this probability score which is straightforward which you can just use this formula because it's you know the probabilities at each time step you just multiply all of them uh, it's very simple but computing this is nothing but the uh, MBR loss or uh, string edit distance loss as you can see here so usually since we are using some sort of a CTC kind of uh, output so there will be some blank symbols and so on so those can be uh, removed uh, while calculating this r which r is basically risk function so the risk function is nothing but the string edit distance between the predicted and the reference sign reference uh, label or reference sentence and if you go through the go to the paper they explain detail de in detail how you can differentiate uh, for example this loss function uh, because this looks like it's a kind of a uh, uh, not a smooth function. It looks like some sort of uh, reward which you get in reinforcement uh, learning. If you look at in reinforcement learning, we use reinforce algorithm or policy gradients kind of algorithm to uh, we, to uh, 
to compute the gradients of the network because it's a single number we don't know it's not a function it's a single number it's not differentiable uh, but we have to use some tricks to uh, make it differentiable so in the same way they explain how do you how we can uh, differentiate this entire loss function and uh, uh, the final uh, gradients uh, formulation all that is given in the paper you can go through it if you want uh, it's a bit mathematical so that's that's about the uh, mbr loss and coming to the shallow fusion of uh, neural network language models is very simple so usually what you do is uh, if you look at any uh, shallow fusion or any other sorts of fusion so what they will do is they will just fuse the probability scores of acoustic model and language model so so if you look at for example uh, standard classical speech recognition engines so what they do is the final hypothesis probability of hypothesis will be probability of uh, the acoustic model uh, plus lambda times probability of a language model so in the same way they are doing here so you have a P rnnt which is basically your rnn transducer predictions and you scale it by 1 minus lambda and you have your probability of the rn language models are normal uh, uh, neural language model score you combine both the scores and then you maximize uh, then you compute uh, but you maximize this score uh, uh, and you compute the arg max of that particular sequence which maximizes this function and that will be your final uh, uh, final hypothesis results right so as simple as that and uh, finally let's come to uh, the experimentation so basically they use 21000 hours of transcribed mandarin speech data tencent ai labs is a, like a very big lab in the uh, very lab, very big lab i would say uh, they have huge amount of data and they have a lot of resource to get this kind of very big data so i mean they have huge amount of training data uh, 12000 hours of it is just read data and 9000 hours is a spontaneous speech data and they also do some sort of uh, uh, augmentation so using some something like uh, speed perturbation volume perturbations and so on uh, these are easily handleable in uh, Kaldi or ESPNet toolkit so it's very easy I mean, you don't have to worry about coding these things uh, in like for example Python so these are already available so and uh, and uh, coming to uh, uh, the test data so the test data is just 1.5 hours so the, so initially I got a little bit confused like why uh, why I mean they have 21,000 hours of training data at least even if they keep 5% of it it will be lot of data right lot of uh, maybe 500 hours of test data but it's just one point hours of test data so I, I don't understand the reason behind this uh, but it is very very small very very small so I mean in fact I would say it's, it's, it's very very small because uh, we can't trust these kind of results on this kind of test data so I would say this data was very very small uh, because 1.5 hours is no, nothing for training 21,000 hours of model and keeping just two hours of test data right so I don't know I don't know the reason behind this uh, maybe we should ask the um, some uh, authors or something so uh, out of which uh, one uh, one hour is red data and two hours is just spontaneous data three hours maybe four hours total test data which is not uh, not correct I would say because usually you have to keep 10 percent or at least five percent of the training data for the testing but anyway um, and uh, coming to the input features, uh, 40 dimensional uh, high resolution MFCCs were used as input and uh, target symbols are 6268 symbols because Mandarin has a lot of characters. I heard in fact they have 40,000 characters but usually they use only 6200 uh, 6, like high frequent ones right. So that's it and coming to the another exp uh, in the experiment itself they are using uh, the uh, 80 billion uh, words for com computing or training a neural network language model and this is the architectural s architecture uh, of the detailed architecture the encoder and decoder as i said uh, there are three layers and uh, first every layer will have around uh, every layer will have three three uh, uh, tdnns and one one transformer uh, i think uh, if i am not wrong uh, i think one or two transformer i don't have to go back and see the diagram but anyway, so this is just the architectures and uh, coming to the results uh, <coughs> in the results they have uh, 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 what happens if you train it for first epoch what is the red speech ICER and spontaneous uh, speech PER they are computing so over the epochs it decreases uh, which is good and uh, coming to the comparison between uh, the uh, what is the use of uh, MBR loss functions if you don't use no LM uh, no uh, MBR loss uh, you get this much uh, uh, CER but if you add um, 
uh, if you use rnnt but without mbr and you use the uh, L, uh, nnlm you will get a uh, lot of uh, different between difference between the previous and one because uh, now the language model is uh, increasing or boosting up your uh, accuracy and uh, if you uh, if you don't use uh, uh, if you use mbr and no lm na na neural language model still you will get better accuracy and if you use uh, both uh, lm Uh, language model uh, and the mbr you will get uh, very good one and if you use train and decode i don't know about this what is this train and decode but anyway you get the best results for this uh, particular row and uh, they have also done some uh, uh, changing the parameters of the factor beta which you saw in the previous equations uh, if you keep it 1.50 you will get this much but if you uh, keep it 0.8 you will get little bit reduction right so that is the whole idea of uh, uh, this tutorial and uh, thank you so much for watching this tutorial if you are if you are not subscribed to my channel please subscribe uh, thank you